I've been working on the room since 9-11, since the towers came down on 9-11. And again, I didn't expect to do this. This is one of the things I really want to share where tonight. Did you start? I started over here. This is where the, the story began, and we'll see this. I actually go into some of the, the slides I put together, which show us this language of the watchers. But this begins on 9 11, and as I said in the, the, the preliminary, I said, you know, it's a prophetic weave. And it really does, because this will start here, this, this elongated figure. We start to see, I'm starting to follow this very much like a jazz improvisation. I don't know where it's going. I'm simply leaning into how it feels. And Quan Yin, she appears as the first entity to begin to make her presence known. And we see this relationship of the repetition of watchers, the repetition of entity, or like cells creating and sustaining the body. And the key here is that it says everything is sentient energy. All is consciousness. There is not a hierarchy. And this is why the great mother, Quan Yin, returns where? To the domestic space. To say, when you return to where you live, I remind you that everything is essential to the key of life. What we've forgotten is that in all of the ancient traditions, alchemy, uh, all of the mystery traditions, the first principle was life, not math. And we start with the principle of math. We start with the principle of division, of separation, of not being there. We have to get somewhere to get. And this is really the, the deeper metaphor, or metaphor, I like to, the pun, um, <laughs> but <laughs> that, that we're literally being invited back to where we live. In other words, that it's the question now of not convincing the grand general mythic abstraction but this greater sense of, well, wait a minute, we really have to make sense of our intimate space. Do you know, how do we live together? How do we, rather than lording over one another, amplify? And that's why I call this an amplifatorium. I see it amplifies okay, our mythic I've sense. Have you anything like this, or this all came just... I like never have. Way, and what I like to point out to people is I never tried to be original. It was never part of my, oh, I've got to be original. It was, it, and it came from my dad, who was a painter, and he, he gave and me this you great gift. to begin with. And, and, and an actor. And why that's important is I never worried about the role of being an artist. I, I realized that as an actor, what art gave me, my calligraphy, was this capacity to connect with energy. You know, and with character, a lot of times, you, you, it's like music. You want to find, is it, are you on tone? It's not true or false. It's does it feel right? Does it taste right? And I think those sensibilities that we get from the creative and imaginative traditions is what allows these ideas to not become essentially religious, but to once again become creative, meaning they're, they're inherently theatrical. They, they call us to the story of, well, what story are we telling? Because certainly the form isn't disappearing here, but as you say, this really hasn't happened before. Mm -hmm. Except isn't it interesting, it's a cave painting. And this is what this is telling us, and why with 12, 12, 12, everything we're going through now is saying that it's not something we're figuring out. There's nothing to learn here. And that's what I like about storytelling. It always says, if it's good storytelling, then you're not going to worry, oh, I didn't know that. You're going to go, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I'll allow that to, to influence me. I'll think about that. I'll, I'll, you know, and, and so that's, that's why uh, uh, this, as I said, has been uh, triggered on 9-11. Um, and I think when the towers came down, it was, very, it was very fascinating. The fall of the Piscean mind, the false erections, secular and religious pride. I have God and you don't. I have money and you don't. Fall to the ground. And then what happens here? The sacred returns us home. It says this is a cave painting. It's storytelling, paint, and imagination. You're the technology. You're the outcome. You're the reason. And I think that that's what we're, we know. And inherently we know that. We look at our children and we go, wait a minute. It's not about what we don't have. It is a story saying, what are we, what are we denying ourselves in terms of our capacity to breathe? And that's one of the things about this, because this is not from a hallucinogenic path. I did not need to get further out. I needed to find a way to anchor, to manifest these things. And that's why I think, psychologically speaking, it's very important that the form retains its form, and yet now can also have this deeper meaning. And, and I think that that helps with this story of now the psyche is saying, you don't need to keep studying form. You can trust the form. Now you can allow the ambient, the, the synchronistic, the unstated, to become much more part of your uh, sense of, of nourishment. And that's really what I think with the creative par you know, paradigm, that sense of we're looking for that which inspires. 
this is an ongoing story, and it's it's the closest I can make it is. Do you remember uh, Ron Howard did the movie A Perfect Mind with uh, where, and and it'd be looking at all the numbers, and then certain numbers would light up. That is how it feels. Certain areas light up, and then it's it's, and we're so used to thinking about like ideas in front of us, and when you're working in an environment like this, suddenly there's an idea in front that's related to how it is in the side above you behind. That again, I think, is training, because when we look at the, not the artist as unique, but really as part of our greater human uh, capacity revealing itself, I really think we're starting to think in non-linear so terms. You know, it's it's different waves come. It's it's it. There's waves of refinement in a sense, because this, as I say, is very rhythmic. It's very, and that's why you can almost with this energy feel that sense of like Tai Chi, letting yourself move the energies. How does it feel? How does it, you know, uh, um, inspire you to move? Maybe we have to contend with the fact that it's not about getting further or figuring more out, but starting to think about stability. Because everything here is stable. We're what's in motion, as I say. And if we think from a quantum perspective, what that's saying is once you're in this relationship with this, it's not this or you, but between both of you, is this field of the imagination that when it's stimulated, it says, ah, do you see? And you're, you're breathing more deeply. There's this. And that's what we're going to understand is that the, the, the universe we're leaving is reactive, meaning we're reacting to the bad ideas of others, defining ourselves by what we are against and what we are for. And what this is getting at, and I feel very important, is a technology that says, no, 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 now that you've arrived, trust what is amplified in you and understand that the mythic teaches that, and as the artist, because notice also that artists line the walls. And that's a very important metaphor because artists understand we don't want each other to paint like each other. We want to inspire each other to paint. So we're looking for ways of, of saying, if you're this artist or this artist, you're going to see the universe in a unique way. But when we come together, we amplify the sense of what's possible. And that's why I say we don't build spaceships, we actually build mind ships, meaning that we build that which in the journey transforms us. It's not just to go and get something in a different location because we don't really like the location we're in. <laughs> and that's, that's the key, so.